Tutorial Photography by Joe Henry Drucker. Since its invention, photography has functioned as a production medium and also a meta medium for reproduction, particularly within printing trades. Both aspects of the medium have depended on the static character of the photo photographic image. Film and video, whether analog or dialogue, pushed photography, photographic imagery in a different direction, stressing narrative that unfolds over time through cuts and editing techniques. Can we imagine another kind of temporal invention into the photographic image that would change our sense of the medium in a radically different way? Could it shift our understanding of the identity of photography from an ontological foundation to an epistemological one? The example I will describe here both engage temporality as an internal dimension, a feature that changes what we have long understood as a static image into one that has a temporal axis. Some people might just call these videos, but their relation to the photographic image and commitment to an interrogation of its conventions seems to justify calling them temporal photographs. In 2007, artist Scott Kildall produced a series of video portraits that records the facial gestures of people who think they are having their picture taken, but don't know when or if the exposure has occurred. Between 10 seconds and 2 minutes each, the segments expose the frozen moment at of the photograph as fiction. The very notion of a moment as discrete identity, as a discrete entity, entity removed from the continuum of, of time, fixed, static, and complete, disappears as a concept of, as the photographic record changes radically. Instead of being an entity, a thing, an image of a single snapshot within a continuum, the photograph becomes an event. The image is not just a cut across the continuing sequence of unfolding events, but a demonstration of the radical incompleteness of the photographic image. The shift from entity to event is crucial to the new ontology of, pho of photographic imagery, but is also new photography's contribution to an altered foundation for epistemology, for knowledge as, as knowing. Temporal photographs are no longer the sign of a single incident. The new dim dimension changes the image. Temporality destroys the fiction of singularity and boundedness on which our idea of an entity, of an image thing that acts as if it were complete, depends. Temporality makes certain conventional contents and deceit very difficult to maintain. Not only can we see more, since the extension and duration show much more than any single image could, but the character of what we see is different. The image is no longer defined on an ontological plane, but is part of the epistemological field. This transformation is reflected and refracted in Kilwell series. The uncomfortable process of waiting for a photograph be taken as all over his subjects' faces and in their body language. Their expressions change and flickers of and flickers of mood, anxiety, annoyance, frustration, question, flirtation show dramatically that they have internalized the idea of the photograph as a final event, a flash, a quick slice through ongoing life, a record, an instant. They dodge toward and lunge away from the camera, waiting for the moment, the snap, the action of the shutter. Their movements are anticipating immobility and as Kildall stretches out the clock in an unspecified stretch of time, they begin to exhibit a restless uncertainty about exactly how to define what it is that the photograph is. Have they missed it? Is it coming? What is the it phenomenon, the photograph? The photographs defined by a limited frame, a time frame, cut, held, fixed, and all Kildall refuses the, to fix the frame, take the picture. Instead, he takes apart the picture. Meanwhile, he struggles subjects 
struggling subjects come and go from their pose, that self-constructed projection of self into an image that is the awkward frozen expression seen in most amateur portrait photographs. Pose, of course, is an effect of, a pho of photographic imagery and our idea about how to compose ourselves for it. Pose is the outward expression of an internalized notion of a cultural phenomenon we call the photograph. The painful, non-delimited extension of this process prolongs anticipation for an event that does not arrive. Every photograph has temporal dimensions, of course, the time of exposure, historical time, time of development, cropping, the time of re reception and circulation. Like any other cultural artifact, photographs are caught up in a web of varying temporalities. In that sense, a photograph, like any artifact or cultural document, is never fixed, but made in each viewing circumstance. But the myths of temporality specific to photography, the frozen moment, the window and mirror imagery, the ling language of the gaze, of the look, the glance, are all attached to the singularity of photographs. That moment is central to our critical understanding of the ontological character of a photograph. The exposure of a receptive material, substrate, light-sensitive film, or pixel-generating optical device at a particular moment in phenomenal time makes a photograph what it is, an indexical sign that is a bounded, discrete entity. The photograph has multiple relations the realm outside the frame, to be sure, but the fixed moment of the photograph defines it as a kind of image, and as a way of seeing and thinking. By stretching the, that temporal instant along its own banal but familiar continuum, Kilbaugh exposes the event character of any and all photographs. Even if photographs inscribe their own recording process in relation to the temporality of perceived phenomena, the moment of exposure provides instant repletiveness. In a conventional photograph, every part of the surface area of the receptive substrate, photo emulsion, or pixel file, is immediately filled, registering a value of color or tone. That immediate repletiveness meant to the photographic image, unlike a hand-drawn image, does not, did not distribute its time of production across the surface a part of the trace of its making. The instantaneity of repleteness provided the ontological foundation, the terms of which we understand that photography is an indexical sign of light, a moment exposed, captured. But when temporality intervenes, much of the, the apparent repleteness dissolves into banality, incidental detail that does not hold. Literally and figuratively, these records, record, recorded details were the subjects of the portrait shifting and moving towards or away from the moment of exposure, transforms the image into a record of something known, shows us, viewer, photographer, photograph subjects, in the process of knowing. Knowing what? The photograph is to be taken. The image becomes an event, an epistemological event in which what is to know that a photograph is going to be taken is recorded, shown, given form. Including a tempor temporal dimension in a photograph also alters its ability to work as a meta medium. How would we abstract the temporal dimension into a template of production? What would that temporal abstraction look like? How would it act? Taking, taking the histogram of a moving image of temporal photograph and reusing it for another image sequence is hard to imagine. The extra noise of shifts and changes, subtle nuances that are part of the image across its temporal axis are all revealed and recorded. A new meta language, degree of difference, relative values and of change, and so on, would needed would be needed to articulate the meta dimension of moving photographs. Photography was a versatile meta-medium because of the way photographic equipment and materials could be manipulated and used to pass images from one domain of production to another. Details, composition, outlines, and shadows, passages and tones, color or contrast were all 
qualities that could be re reworked in ink, etching, silkscreen, or offset or scaled to spectacular proportions. The time dimension of temporal photography takes away the stability on which metamedia fluidity was enabled. Too much information is present, and that new information is lost into a sequence of differences, of changes that register in relation to one to each other, creating a field of values that are always other than each other. A little more smile, a tilt of the head, a raised eyebrow. In any single image, these would simply be trace and mark. But can difference, differences become part of a remediation? Could these temporal shifts become part of aspects of a print image? Unlikely and unnecessary for the most part, embedded video clips and segment per segments perform in digital context in many of the ways print images work in analog media. But I was to insist on the difference between temporal photography and video or film. Kildall's project was not to make video portraits of its subjects, but to take apart the still photo portrait by introducing a temporal dimension into it. What makes temporal photography distinct from video is its relation to the conventions of photographic imagery and direct recognition of these parts as part of its production. It turns the conception of the, a photographic image as an entity into the realization that a photograph is always an image event. Another example of temporal photography and its effect complements Kildall's project, but exhibits a different effect and effect. This project by of Jamie Diamond, uh, whom I met when she was finishing her MFA at University of Pennsylvania in 2008, was called Constructed Family Portraits. The piece consisted of formally composed family portraits, static, well-organized group images. They were actually groups of strangers she had met invited, and invited to be photographed as a family in a hotel room. She exhibited the formal photographs and video of the role playing at familiarity and intimacy that leads up to the photographs side by side, the talk and interactions of the family members, and the peculiar and idiosyncratic behaviors of the family system, the weird freezing off of faces, limbs, features as each person composed themselves to produce the image of themselves they wanted to project. All these things were recorded up to the final moment of the portrait and then its aftermath. The two media were in dialogue, formal portrait and video of its temporal continuum. The videos were photographs whose temporal dimension had been extended. Their very existence was predi predicated on documenting the fictions of the photographic moment. The fiction on which photo photographic imagery are based, the conception of its ontological status, have consequences in the culture. For instance, much of our sense of self as a bounded entity comes from the photographic processes that transform the fragmented phenomenological sensorium of the embodied, fragmented, distributed, perceived self into a reified image. The simulacrum of the Google map passes itself off as an image of real space, as if space were not a construction of human emotions, experiences, politics, tensions, and other forces. The photographic reification constantly imposes an entity-based transcription of lived phenomena onto our, our perception of these experiences, turning relations and events into places and things. By introducing a temporal axis into the image, its capacity to reify dissolves. The image won't compose, won't stand still, won't self reference as a reification, refuses to be resolved into an entity. The temporal image is necessarily, is necessarily an event, with duration, uncertain boundaries, arbitrary beginnings and endings, filled with all kinds of possible moves and changes. Something happens, it is happening, going, goes on happening, in the, temp in the temporal photograph. This was true of the static photograph, but the momentariness often deceived us into thinking it was a complete image of a bounded moment, then it done. The event-based approach to imagery brings with, with it the continuum as an operative concept, and that continuum is stated and 
circumstantial, refuses to transcend history and specificity, location, and point of view. The camera records the dialogue of photographic situation and photographed situation. But the partial and embodied quality of the activity is strikingly revealed. The temporal image demonstrates the unfinishedness of photography at the level of the image and, and as an aesthetic process, one that, like all aesthetic activity, demonstrates a way of knowing, a fundamental epistemological method in which the ontological category of knowledge gets replaced by a constructed event of knowing.